Test, test, one, two, testing, one, two. Mic two. Test, one, two, one, two, testing, one, two, one, two, coming through. He louder, he louder, up. louder, louder. How are we now? Go, Nick. Testing, testing, one, two, one, two, testing. Down. Go again. Testing, testing, one, two, one, two, testing.
Yep. <laughs> All right, out until kickoff.
Hello everybody and welcome to Quarries Park in Clifton Hill for this Doherty Cup fixture between FC Clifton Hill and FC Bulleen Lions. It's the giant killers of last year in Clifton Hill who were only a penalty shootout away from a place in the national stages of the Australia Cup welcoming the informed Bulleen Lions from EPL 1 in the second tier of Victorian football. A very warm Good Friday here in Metro Melbourne for this game. Nick Tabano and Josh Parrish here to take you through all the action. Of course, last year, as we mentioned, Clifton Hill was so close to a place in the national stages. They were in State League 2 at the time. They came up against their local rivals in Northcote City and fell on penalties on that day. Oh, FC Bulleen Lions, their cup quest last year ended before it really got started. A disappointing loss against Whittlesea United. But they're looking to go that little bit better this year and rediscover a little bit of that magic from five years ago when they were last on the national stages of the Australia Cup. We'll take you through the starting lineups for both teams, starting with the visitors, Bulleen, who have made two changes to the team that beat Werribee City in the league on Monday night. Dimitri Parascos and Vincent Nicoletti into the starting lineup. Dante Conte out with injury today. And as well, moving to the bench is Sean Cooper, while Puppy, who was one of the players on the bench on Monday night in that 5-1 win, is out of the team as well. Marcus Demanche is also missing, despite returning from international duty with Mauritius. Clifton Hill have made a bunch of changes from their round one loss against Sydenham Park, but there are some familiar faces in the team. Chris Theodoridis, Lewis Hall and Luke Biles, all former Heidelberg players who have been there and done that in the top level, but there is no Dylan McGlade and no Harry Noon on this occasion. Welcome in Josh Parrish here from a very warm and blustery Quarries Park. Josh, the conditions are going to be trying for the players out here today. Maybe the last glimpse of summer weather here in Melbourne as we get to as we're heading to autumn. But a big game today between two teams, hoping especially for Clifton Hill to rediscover the magic of last year, while Bulleen looking to go that little bit better in the cup this season. Yeah, Clifton Hill, as you say, giant killers, and they took Northcote City to penalties in the final Victorian round of the Australia Cup slash Doherty Cup last year. So an incredible run they went on. We're away here with FC Bulleen Lions in the white kick, kit, kicking from left to right. And uh, looking forward to seeing if uh, Clifton Hill can spring an upset here or if Bulleen's recent good form will hold. So it's Clifton Hill doing the early attacking in their baby blue home kits, kicking to the left of screen. Bulleen in their away white kits, kicking to the right. That was Robbie Williamson, the number 16. Here to hear us now to take the throw in, one of the, the veterans of this Clifton Hill team, sending it long up the line. Across is Nicoletti, a rare start for him today, and he wins the throw in. One of the impressive Bulleen youngsters, the other one, who was oh so impressive on Monday night in Finn Harbinson, who opened up his account for the senior side late in that 5-1 win against Werribee on the bench today. Hopefully we'll see him at some point after that impressive cameo. Here's Westerdale. Winning the throw. Boleyn coming to this game, Josh. Five games unbeaten. They're in some incredible form at the moment. They've found form at the right time after that round two loss against Bentley. They've defeated Eastern Lions, they've defeated North Geelong Warriors, they've defeated Georgies, drew with Melbourne City, and then that win against Werribee City. As here come Clifton Hill through Chalmay. Strong challenge there from Nicoletti. And the ball is out. 
for a corner. So a very small pitch here at Quarries Park. We're still getting our bearings here. A much smaller pitch compared to what we're used to in the in the VPL when we're watching Bulleen Lions in action. We'll see what Clifton Hill can do from this corner. Taunts him forward for this one. Always floated in towards the near post. Al Sharifi got there, helps it on its way. Menelau sends it forward towards Karita. Karita riding a few challenges and wins the free kick. Mark Karita, one of the informed players at the moment, four goals this season, scored again against Werribee City. And he has been key to this run, Josh, that him and Dennis Menelau have really been central to it. They're both now combined for eight goals this season. Yeah, new look. Uh Bulleen front line with Carita added to the mix after coming across from Werribee City and he tasted some pretty sweet success against his former club last week. That same front line leading the way that started against Werribee City, including Hussein Al Sharifi, who we'll get to in just a second after his simply incredible performance against Werribee as Lofts looks to find Al Sharifi. Ball is cleared away and out for a throw in. Hussein Al Sharifi, Josh, I mean, we hadn't seen much of him before last Monday against Werribee. Been used as more of a plug and place substitute by Giuliano Febarino, but he got his start at right wing with Jamie Wilson nursing an injury and Marcus Demanche on international duty, and he made the most of it with. Well, if you haven't seen it, make sure you head on over to either the FC Bulleen Lions or the MPL Victoria Pod socials and go and give it a look. One of the great goals, not only in Victorian Premier League 1, but in Victorian football that you will see in 2024. Yeah, it was sublime, wasn't it? Al Sharifi on the end of a spectacular team move. Not one, but two beautiful dummies in that uh, that run of play. But it's Clifton Hill on the attack here, winning a throw-in through Dimitri Cosmas. Notably, Sean of some of their most experienced names if you look at the squad that took to the field against Sydenham Park last week, you mentioned it as we came out, Nick, but the likes of Harry Noon and Costa Kanakaris, and, you know, the, these guys are, have been there and done that. Uh, Dylan McGlade, who's played top flight just last season. John McShane is on the bench today. He scored goals galore for Altona Magic and Danny Nong City. Mm. So it's a, it's a much younger and... and you know, the names don't pop off the page in the same way as they might do on a week-to-week -week basis for Clifton Hill. Still got Luke Biles marshalling the back line uh, alongside Lewis Hall and then Chris Theodorides between the sticks. Only 150 games for Heidelberg. All part of that all-successful Heidelberg team as Menelau's played in behind, but the flag is up late. And Dennis Menelau going for the audacious chip in the end, which... Just chipped the crossbar, but danger signs there for the Clifton Hill defence. It was Cardillo with that cutting through ball for Menelau, who is finding form at the moment, Josh. He's started the season on the bench. He's worked his way into the starting lineup over the last few weeks, and since scoring that first goal of the year against Eastern Lions, he really hasn't been stopped. Four goals. He was unlucky not to have a fifth against Melbourne City, which was, in fact, an own goal. But such a presence up front, quite a physical striker. He's, he gets in the right places at the right time. Yeah, and his, his movement is very sharp. That time just went a little early. We were directly in line with the, the last defender there. We had a good view of that and a uh, correct decision made by the assistant. But uh, they've got to watch those runs from Menelau. He's going to be lurking. Imagine a defensive unit featuring Luke Biles is going to be pretty well organised. They're going to know when to drop back and when to step up. Just in front of Luke Biles, Lewis Hall playing as a, a six today. Yeah, stepping into midfield, usually a, a defender in his Heidelberg yep. days, but he's pretty versatile. He's deployed across the back line. Various spots. Westerdale. Ball set forward, but straight to the youngster, Nicoletti. Looks to play it quickly towards Al Sharifi, but it's Cleared away. Here is Shalmay feeding it over the top, and it's Kanakubo who has some space on that far side. Isolated with Cardillo on the right. Quick feet there. As he gets towards the byline. 
Ball goes out for a goal kick. Jinji Kanakubo spent part of last season with Banyol City. Played around State League One last year as well with Westgate. Now Clifton Hill in the fourth tier of Victorian football this year after winning State League Two Southeast. Now on their way in a much more difficult State League One, Josh, that we know is very, very difficult to get out of. That's one thing as we do know, and it's a very competitive State League with the likes of Ballarat City now in this competition. Of course, they're playing in Northwest this year. So the ball's flicked over the top. Carita getting in behind. Well marshaled. Feeds it back. Menelau. Carita again. He whips it in towards the back post, but way too much on that one. And Westerdale couldn't chase it down. When we talk about the, the bottleneck in uh, uh, in the State League 1, which is such a hard league to get out of. You know, historically only one team promoted from each region. And uh, the uh, incentive this season is the expansion in VPL 2 and the potential for several teams to get promoted depending on how many teams move up from VPL 2 to VPL 1 with the restructure and the national second tier coming in. This is the, the season to be ambitious if you want to crack the VPL ranks from State League 1 because there are going to be more promotion spots available than ever before with uh, VPL, uh, VPL 2 increasing to 14 teams next season. One of those teams, Sydenham Park, was the side that defeated Clifton Hill in round one. They've certainly loaded up as Lofts for El Sharifi. They cut through two players and find Menelau under immediate pressure. Chalmay, Hall, skipping around a few players and he's fouled by Timmy Paraskos. You mentioned that loss to Sydenham Park last week. That team is absolutely stacked as far as this level is concerned and they showed their credentials knocking off Pasco Vale last Very night. Very impressive. In the Doherty Cup. Massive cup set, but when you consider, you know, Paco is a is a VPL two side, but you know, they're looking to bounce straight back up this year. They're on top of the table and right up the top end and absolutely hammering teams most weeks. It's restarted short from Ethan Reid. Ivan Gergic, pass out of the back. Go through the middle with Westerdale. Trying to pick their way through here, Bulleen. Luke Lofts, fouled by Lewis Hall there. He'll shove over and FC Bulleen Lions have a free kick, which they thought about taking quickly. Instead, Westerdale will measure something up. The tall timber does come forward. Marco Bogaric and Ivan Gergic making belated runs to the edge of the penalty area. You know, Westerdale can deliver a pinpoint set piece. This one's looking for Gergic and just took a second grab at it from Theodorides to reel it in, but just slightly overhit from for the run of the big centre half, who's already scored one this season, albeit not in conventional fashion for a central defender, Nick. Well, it seems like when Ivan Gergic scores, despite his his size, and you'd expect him to be... Uh, essentially, if he's going to score, he's going to score from set pieces using his head. But the two goals, his last two goals that he's scored have been absolute crackers. We think back to that goal he scored against Eastern Lions at the Venn last year, and then you mentioned that goal against Melbourne City at Casey in the, with one of the last kicks of the game. Uh, an inch-perfect shot from the edge of the area, and him and Marco Bagaric are, are such a formidable partnership in the heart of the fence that they've, they've forged a really solid pairing since Ivan made the move at the start of the last season and he's had to work his way into the team as well because it was Puppy who was starting when Ivan was out and then he's had to slowly but surely get himself back into the team and since then he hasn't looked back and it's a good problem to have if you're, you're Giuliano Febarino when you've got so many options and so many options in form. If I'm the coach, I pick the centre back who's going to score me a screamer, but that's just me. It's Peter Harris launching it long. Good distance on the throw to the near post. Harris opted for the header. Both teams scrapping for this ball. Men allow, couldn't keep it. Clifton Hill will restart through Theodorides. Which is a long diagonal. 
Uncontested. This is Cosmos. Back with Krajicic. Little clip ball into a channel for Shalmay. He turned it in field, but didn't work out how he was intending. Goal kick Bolin and Clifton Hill holding their own at the moment. Yeah, no real good opportunity so far for Bolin. I mean, the the only real chance was that that offside where Menelau was an inch or two just in behind Jacob Krajicic, I think it was, and Luke Biles at that time, but. So far, so good from Clifton Hill. They're, they're holding their own, but the question is, can they sustain that? Of course, the, the other side of that coin is, you know, Boleyn having only played a matter of days ago. They've only had three full days between games. It was a late Monday night fixture, you know. How are the, the, the sore bodies that played a lot of minutes on Monday night going to fare as the game wears on in these very trying conditions today here at, uh, here at Quarries Park? course on the bench for Boleyn today. Sean Cooper, James Wilson, Angelo Amato, Finn Harbinson and James Sekris, the backup goalkeeper. So you would expect that at some point some of those names would be thrown on. Well from a Clifton Hill perspective, uh, George Janopoulos, John McShane, Manus Salakis, Gabriel Baritza, Alexander Piccinelli and Louis Papadopoulos on the bench for Clifton Hill. It's Westerdale's free kick. He lashed it towards goal. Well off target if it was a shot. The ambitious one at that. Hear that wind just howling at the moment through Quarries Park. It is certainly quite a blustery day. These conditions aren't going to be easy. And just trying to get a sense of the wind. I feel like I've got to pick up some grass here and, and do a <laughs> quick throw in the air and see. We might have a bit of a... X amount of goals breeze here at Quarries <laughs> Park, which is very rare in uh, sort of football parlance to be talking about. Round ball parlance, I should be saying, but it does feel like in, in any sort of game where you might have a bit of a X goal breeze, it might be today. Bit of a swirling wind. Difficult to tell which side it's favouring at the moment. It's sort of coming towards us at the moment, so it's a little bit of a, it's a crosswind. Yeah, if that's such a thing. <laughs> wreaking havoc with the players, but certainly a great relief for the spectators who are absolutely baking in the afternoon sun here at Quarries Park. Cardillo throwing it long up the line. Bullen gains some territory. Yeah, you're, you're hard-pressed for shade here if you're, you're here. You kind of got the trees on that opposite <laughs> side or the little sort of shelter behind us. Other than that. It's Robbie Williamson, who's offside and takes the opportunity for a spot of shooting practice. As we know, Josh, I mean, Boleyn haven't had much cup success in the last five years or so. I mean, of course, two of those years, COVID ravaged, but the two years since then, they bowed out in the cup in 2022 against Melbourne Knights, 2023 last year against Whittlesea United, who were in State League 2 at the time. Obviously, that came at a, a point in Boleyn season last year where they were really struggling. But this time around, I think they should really be fancying themselves to give it a real crack in the cup, considering how well they've started this year in the league and that they should feel confident in, you know, giving a little bit of a, a bit of a whirl and seeing how they can go in the in the Doherty Cup. Of course, 2019, they they were on the national stage playing against Brunswick Juventus at, at the Venator Club, and God, it would be good to see the Venator Club back on the national stage of the Australia Cup. Yeah, I mean, contrasting fortunes in the cup recently for these two sides. Not exactly a local derby, this, but uh, just down the, the M3. It's a bit like the uh, the M3 derby, in a way. <laughs> you could probably call it that. Basically, the yeah, the exit's derby. I mean, the, yeah, the M3 exit's derby. I mean, you got this is like the Hoddle Street exit, and you got the Boleyn <laughs> Road exit. No, I think uh, the team that sort of sits in between the two of them in Northcote City are more of a, a local rival for Clifton Hill. It was almost the perfect draw last year, and... Yeah, with a scuttlebutt, they were really up for that game against Northcote and were so, so close to causing one of the great upsets. This is Al Sharifi. Going to work down the rights. Can't make anything of that. Well defended. Peter Harris getting his body in the way. 
alternate reality, Josh. Clifton Hill win that game against Northcote. They play Adelaide United in the round of 32 of the Australia Cup. And, of course, uh, they get the home draw against A-League sides. I don't think it would have been here. <laughs> I, I I suspect not, Nick. Yeah. I don't, I don't think the good people of Channel 10 would uh, really have fancied coming out of Quarries Park, but you never know. Why not? Bit of uh, temporary seating, temporary scaffold. Again. 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 I suspect would have been at Northcote anyway. Probably. Would have been the logical venue. Although, Olympic Village as well. Possibility, considering the close relationship that Clifton Hill and Heidelberg seem to have with so many players taking the well-worn path between the two clubs. Of course, uh, Michael Tarekos, the, the chair of, of Clifton Hill as well. But Garrett, head a full short. Robbie Williamson, a long-range bomb that skews off target. and Cardillo is able to clear. Quarson in the mix there. This is Kanakubo. Long floated ball. Williamson was lurking. Pauline managed to scramble the danger away. Now Menelau. Westerdale. Up against Hiris. Carlton Westerdale keeps his balance well and wins a throw in for Bulleen. Just a bit of a nervy moment there in the Lions back line. As that cross came in. Like a good trajectory on it from Kanakubo. Yeah, not many strikers, though, when it comes to balls in the air, are going to beat both Bagaric and Gergic when True. it's up in a one on one. So, nervous moment, but I think that they'd always back themselves in those moments. I think that their biggest issue is when it becomes a bit of a foot race and the game becomes expanded. So, for Clifton Hill, it's going to have to be in those moments of transition when they're sort of like, like in that moment there. Mm. But. Got to make it stick. Easier said than done. Lewis Hall, Cosmos. Now, Robbie Williamson is drifted wide and goes to the byline. One of the great names, Robbie Williamson. See if he can entertain us this afternoon. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I was waiting for it. One thing that I just have noticed with Bellin is without Dante Conte in midfield, who I think has been brilliant to start this season, him being out today, it seems like in the early going, they're lacking a little bit of energy mm. in the middle of the park because Dante is just such a, a never-ending source of energy in the middle of the park. He's always running backwards, getting forwards as well. It's an opportunity for Dimi Parascos to really show what he can do in the team. But without Dante, who was out injured today, it's a little bit... They're, they're, they're losing a little bit of energy in that middle of the park. So you can tell the difference when you know they look to play more mm. on the front foot when Dante's just driving forward. And not many players can do that in VPL1 like him. So... Sort of gets a team like run. this on a on a pitch like this, I, f I feel they're uh, really missing a bit of Dante Conte grit and grind. To take this game by the scruff. This is Kanakubo lining one up. Not too much on it, and comfortable claim for Ethan Reid between the sticks. Bit of a disappointing patch here from Bulleen. I mean, they haven't really been able to get too much of a foothold in this game, and so far it's been quite comfortable for Clifton Hill. Sometimes, Nick, teams tend to play down to the level at times. I mean, if there's one thing we saw, not even just with... We'll keep that for just a sec. This is Begaric. Floated ball. Carita. I was going to mention is, you mentioned Sydenham Park, Josh, but mm. the other team last night from State League One that showed they can cause a stir was Eltham Redbacks. I mean, a 5 4 loss against Brunswick Juventus, now leading 4 2. Incredible. What a comeback. Heartbreaking, of course, for the Redbacks. Another team who plays their games on synthetic, just like Bulleen. The Red Eltham North Reserve. An absolute cup classic that one was. The Garrich taken out late. And this. Could be the game's first booking, perhaps. Dimitri Cosmos, full of apologies, largely to the referee. Who inspects the damage and produces the slice of cheese. Yeah, fair, fair decision there from the ref to award that free kick. But I hope Marco's all good, because they've actually called for the physio here. Strong challenge there on the, on the bullying captain. 
With our puppy there today, I mean, they've only really only got Sean Cooper on the bench who can sort of slot in defensively if Marcos has to be forced off at some point. But Cooper more of a fullback, would you say? Or? Yeah, yeah, he definitely is. I mean, he can play centre back, but his best football so far, at least, the bullying has been at right back. And I mean, we saw how Puppy has just slotted in so seamlessly at centre back for him when he's been, you know, called upon, and him not being available today is. Uh, He's a tough one mm. in that sense for Bulleen because, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's been in such good form as of late, especially playing as that centre-back. So, you know, we'll see what they can do if Marco's uh, not able to continue. But I think by the looks of it, he should be all good, hopefully just be able to run that one off. Both teams seizing the opportunity for a drink. You can hardly blame them. Sonny's beating down unseasonably warm autumn weather here in Melbourne and well the crowd's enjoying it not sure if the players are <laughs> it's not yet well it's a little bit of a call a bit of a March heat wave this weekend over Easter got a, bit, a couple warm days coming up so cup action returning for all these NPL VPL sides and certainly mm. you know the the conditions have been quite intense for these players let me run you through a couple of the other incredible games that took place last night, Nick. Berwick City 4, North Sunshine Eagles 5. Wow. And that's all in 90 minutes, by the way. North Sunshine were down 3-2 and scored three goals in the space of, what, 23 minutes? Berwick City getting a late consolation. They're fourth of the match. Don't often say that. Ballarat City 4, knocking off Nutta Warding 2. The uh, Salvatore brothers absolutely ripping it up. Oh, yeah, Nelson and uh, my favourite name in Victorian football, Nick. Ronaldinho Salvatore ga bagging himself a brace. You mentioned Sydenham Park knocking off Pasco Vale 3-1. Port Melbourne Oakley Cannons going all the way to penalties. The marathon shootout as well. I think it was 8-9, wasn't eight, it? 8-7, seven, eight, seven. I believe. Wow. And this, this is an incredible scoreline. Uh, uh, Burundara 2, Altona East Phoenix 6. Just hold that thought for just a sec as Corita went to ground and ball does go out for a goal kick. But, yeah, vindication for Craig Filer. Well, if that game uh, went to extra time. So it was 2 all. And then Altona East Phoenix just ran all over the top of Burundara in extra time. Four unanswered goals. Some of the goal scoring runs <laughs> last night were just ridiculous <laughs> because Altham were up 4 2 without 10 minutes to go. And then. Um, Juventus scored two goals in a matter of minutes. I think there was a couple red cards, and, mm. and then they got, went on to win the game in extra time. Redbacks finished the game with nine. Brunswick Juventus with ten. Well, another little subplot to that is uh, of a from a Bulleen persuasion. Uh, Max Bachelor scored for Brunswick Juventus yesterday as well. So there's a few ex Bulleen players in that team. Choi Wonsuk and, uh, and Stefan Ristich as well. Brunswick Juve, the, the off-season recruiting sprees, like nothing we've ever seen before. Yeah, the, for their uh, shock relegation. The VPL1 All-Stars. Back to Theodore Reedy's to clear. Got a little shove in the back on Westerdale. Referee will belatedly pull up Robbie Williamson, who, well, let's hope he uh, listens to his better angels as he remonstrates with the referee. I'll be looking up the discography in a minute, Nick. I make no apologies. <laughs> Anywho. Still scoreless if you're just joining us here at Quarries Park between FC Clifton Hill and FC Bulleen Lions. No major chances of note, you mu must say. Probably the best opening of the game probably fell Clifton Hill's way. Yeah, I mean, Bulleen have really struggled to break through this really well-organised Clifton Hill team. I mean, we haven't seen much of Luke Lofts. Mm. We haven't seen much of Al Sharifi, you know, and those sort of players are so important to kick-starting those attacks. And I think at the moment they're really... They're just not getting much of a feel of this mm. game. The, the, the pitch isn't, you know, a, a carpet per se, so it might make it a little bit more difficult for them. But they've got to adjust to these sort of conditions, the heat, the pitch... It's not an easy place to come to. Even though this is a State League 1 team, this is their moment. Like, they're going to relish this. They've got nothing to lose in this game. Boleyn, they don't want to lose against a State League 1 team, considering how well they've been playing in the league as of late. Certainly not. The, the impressive thing about Clifton Hill's defending is 
we've barely said the name, Luke Miles. Yeah. He's been almost a general back there as Al Sharifi breaks free, cuts one back. The shot comes in from Lofts and it's just over the crossbar. Bulleen's best chance of the match so far. Much better there from Bulleen. You can see how much danger they can get into when they're able to get those balls in those wide areas. And Al Sharifi, who was so good with his crossing on Monday night, finding an angle and a good pass to Lofts, but Justin didn't get his body over it enough. But that's that's what Bulleen can do. That's the warning sign. You can't afford to leave Lofts in any sort of space on the edge of the area. Luke Lofts so dangerous when he's striking the ball from that sort of territory. Rarely seen a player with his sort of shooting ability at this level. And when he's not getting entirely clean purchase on his shots, I mean, it reminds me of last Monday, his free kick against Werribee City, which was a... I mean, it wasn't the best of the Luke Lofts collection, but it was still enough to, mm. you know, sort of catch the Werribee goalkeeper off a little bit and it bounced over him at that last minute. So, you know, he's still just got... Even when he's not hitting them to perfection, he can still cause all sorts of headaches with his efforts. He gets a lot of swerve and dip on the ball, which I think makes it difficult for goalkeepers. So here come Clifton Hill. Kanakubo losing out to Gergic. His attempt to start the counter-attack is stymied by the clearance of Jacob Krajicic. Just having a look, Josh, it looks like Bulleen have already made a substitution on that far side. It's like Jamie Wilson's already on. Well, maybe that was one at the drinks break that we missed, Nick. It's just trying to get confirmation of who's come off. Creed is still on the bark. I think it is Dennis Menelau who is off. Yes, indeed. So, so yeah. I wonder if that's uh, injury enforced or not. Uh, half, well, changing in the first half is a bit of a statement if it's tactical. Carita going up top. Jamie Wilson onto the left-hand side. And we have another former Heidelberg player on the pitch. It's been a bit of a... Uh, just a sec. Threatening with the long throws here, Clifton Hill. That one's lofted over the bar by Krajic. Well, it's an interesting one with Jamie Wilson because, of course, he was signed as sort of one of their main guys up top this season. We haven't seen much of him because he played against Preston the season mm. opener and he got sent off within minutes against Bentley Greens in round two and he missed a couple games and then he got injured when he came back as well. So his minutes have been limited over the last few weeks. So a good opportunity for him at the moment because with Demanche still working his way back from, from jet lag, he literally just flew in this morning. We spoke to him before the game. And, you know, with that opening there and with if Menelau's going to miss time as well, I mean, there's a chance for him to get back into this starting lineup if he can have a big one today. Jesse Cooley, Graham getting involved there. It's a Bulleen ball with Jake Cardillo on throwing duties and again trying to force Bulleen up the pitch. Picked off and now Cosmos works it wide. Hearus. Still going Peter Hearus. Down the left, cut back to Williamson. It's laid off and Clifton Hill almost in on goal. Massive shout for handball. All the Clifton Hill players going up. Ricochet at short range. Now Carita has managed to keep hold of it somehow. Carita out to the substitute Wilson who couldn't control it in stride. This has opened up here for Kanakubo. Jinji Kanakubo. What a move and what a sliding challenge. Ivan Gergic to the rescue for Bulleen. Now we go back the other way. Al Sharifi. Long switch. Luke Lofts. Great first touch from him. Wilson was looking for Carita at the back post, but it's over hit and into touch as this game goes from end to end to end. Chaotic few minutes there and something this game really needed. It's been a, a very stop-start game. I think both teams just getting a bit of a feel of this contest. And just in these last couple of minutes, we're starting to see this game really, really open up. And a good chance up one end, that desperate challenge from Ivan Gergic and Berlin breaking in transition. And, you know, 
That was a good, good little play there. But Clifton Hill, they've been very disciplined. They've been very good at getting back and, and shutting down those avenues and not allowing Carita to get in behind with his speed or getting Luke Lofts, you know, isolated in those areas he likes to be in where he's able to just pick holes in defences. At the moment, this is very impressive from, from Clifton Hill right up for this game. Williamson. Billy Graham wants the throw and he'll get it. So we've played just about half an hour here at Quarries Park. Very, very warm. Good Friday. This Doherty Cup fixture, win or go home for either side. Always helped clear. Lofts with the header towards Carita. Shut down by Lewis Hall. Feeds it out wide. Here's a chance now for Clifton Hill to get forward. Well played there from Cosmos. Feeds it centrally in the shot from range. It was always rising. A little bit better there from the home side. But again, when they've been able to get forward, they're getting themselves in good areas. But nothing really to test mm. Ethan Reid just yet. Yeah, struggling to get their efforts on target. That was Shalmay with the strike. He's had a couple of openings already. Hasn't made them count. Gergic for Cardillo. Clifton Hill ball. Tell you what, you'd be very, very pleased if you, you nick George George Acopolis at the moment, with how this first half has gone. I mean, Clifton Hill at the moment just so comfortable and just not phased. They've they've just been very, very good. And Bulleen, I tell you what, they the longer this game stays nil nil, the better for Clifton Hill because you'd sense that frustration begins to grow for Bulleen. They've come off that really short turnaround. How do they adjust? It's Carita's layoff. Wilson Al Sharifi. Finds himself closed down very quickly. Helped on to Lofts. Luke Lofts goes down. And it was a clean challenge. Got a toe to the ball. Did Robert Farquharson. I think he went down a little bit, a little bit too easily there. Mm. Luke Lofts just potentially looking to draw the penalty. Farquharson did enough. And now Lofts will take the in-swinging corner. Peter Reedy's underneath it. It was a free header for Carlton Westerdale, who really should have done a lot better there. Yeah, it's a great ball into the back post, and Westerdale with so much space. But I don't think he knew much about it. As much mm. as it was coming towards him, I mean, that sun is, is right in his eyes as well. And, I mean, when do you usually see Carlton Westerdale score headed goals? It, it's almost, usually one taking the set piece rather yes, than on the end of it. Yes, yeah, so, you know, in all due respect, you probably would have rather that's going to a Bagarich or a Gergich sure. or a Karita in those sort of areas, but... Still unmarked, Nick. Yeah, probably should have at least got that one on target. I think he'd be quite disappointed with that effort regardless. Clifton Hill, probably not their first defensive priority. They had more tall timber to worry about. It's kind of Kubo. Doesn't quite bounce his way. Cardillo for Al Sharifi. Ball in ball. Nicoletti to take the throw. Back to Westerdale. Gergic finding Wilson under immense pressure. It's worked out by Chalmay. Home side have possession off the throw again. Got to be encouraged by their start here. Good distance off the throw. It's headed out to Carita. He can't find a teammate. Maybe had more time than he knew. Westerdale. Turns in field past Shalmay, but Great defensive header from Krajic away. And then Kanakubo was fouled. That's Parascos, who was the guilty party. Hey. 
centering ball and Ethan Reid doesn't get there and a big collision but it's just over the crossbar Clifton Hill come close Dimi Cosmos on the end of it nearly Again. moment there and a big scare for Bulleen Again, very, very dangerous in those areas, Clifton Hill. I mean, that's probably their best chance on goal just yet, at least putting Ethan Reid under some pressure. I'll tell you what, if you believe, it's almost about just the moment, getting the half-time, kind of hitting the reset button. They just mm. seem a bit leggy at the moment, a little bit tired. I, I wonder if that short turnaround is having anything to do with it in these conditions. And, I mean, losing Dennis Menelau so early, you wouldn't have wanted to be, if you're Giuliano Feverino, being forced to make a substitution using one of your windows so early. Bullying up against it at the moment. <laughs> Bullying are just waiting for the halftime whistle, as you say. Yeah, just want to get to the break and just basically hit the reset button and go again. It's been a tough first 45 for Clifton Hill you'd be so encouraged with this start if you can just they can maintain it they might be able to cause a bit of an upset here Peter Harris back to Biles traffic in front of him but he picks a path to Lewis Hall coughs up possession to Sharifi Sharifi nips in again lovely back heel from Lofts touch of class now Westerdale turning on the accelerator. Sharifi twisting and turning, trying to find an angle. An opponent glued to his back. Well defended again, Clifton Hill. Nicoletti, quick restart. Oh, lovely touch from Shalmate at the beating of Parascos. Now Kanakubo made off by Williamson. Cosmos with the crossfield ball. Farquharson up from right fullback. And Jamie Wilson doing his defensive duties, tracking back well. Oh, they're going to shape up for another long throw, which has been the weapon of choice. Farquharson looking for Cryer Chich. Couldn't get any direction on it. Lofts. Not enough power on it to find Carita. As much as we wax lyrical about Luke Loft, it's not really an aerial threat. No. <laughs> Theodorides pumps it downfield. Cardillo. Wilson was caught. And will this be a booking? Was Krajicic showing studs there? Yep, the yellow card's out for Jacob Krajicic. I want to talk about something we haven't spoken a lot about so far, being quite unmoved between the sticks. Chris Theodorides. Mm. Good to see him still in action, albeit in State League 1. I mean, we've seen his career with Heidelberg United and the Preston Lions as well, where he spent a year and helped them get promoted. Yeah, championship winner, MPL 3 in 2022. He was absolutely sensational towards the back end of that Preston campaign. Made some unbelievable stops. This is a save I remember very very clearly against Melbourne City at Frank Holohan in the, the promotion deciding game where he's absolutely wrong footed going in the wrong direction and makes a, a miraculous stop with a trailing hand he's been such a great goalkeeper in all three of the Victorian divisions and especially multiple trophies won at Heidelberg he spent or was it four or five games that started last year at Heidelberg as well as an, as an injury replacement goalkeeper when they had a bit of a keeper crisis at the start of the year and it was Brendan White that was missing and uh, Nick Erish as well and they called Chris Theodorides in for a couple games didn't do a bad job at all. I mean it was timed well because he just signed for Clifton Hill and he was able to then finish up his dues with Heidelberg and then start the, the state league season. Lofts, deep corner delivery. Again, Westerdale was the target. Then he'll get it away. Chalmay just ran it into touch. Big 
thank you to the hospitality from Clifton Hill, just bringing us some extra water. It is it is so warm out here at the moment. It is yeah, it feels like February, not 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 the end of March right now. Big thank you to Clifton Hill for the hospitality. Water's delivered to the commentary position. Always nice. Farquharson trying to make something happen late on in this half. Picked off by Cardillo. And he was collected. Farquharson telling him to get up. You can see a little bit of bite, a little bit of edge seeping into this game. Yeah, I just wonder if we've seen a few bookings. I mean, there's going to be a few players that are going to have to be quite well disciplined in the second half. And you do wonder if both coaches will look to to make some changes and freshen things up. I mean, we spoke about Pauline have already made a substitution with bringing Dennis Menelau off, I believe, a force change. And bringing Jamie Wilson on. We just had the waters delivered. Now we've got food delivered, Nick. Absolutely so, uh, sensational. Yeah, we've had some, some skewers as well. So <laughs> we'll tuck in at halftime with Mateo. So no stress at all. <laughs> oh, thank you very much to our gracious hosts. It's Bulleen, win a late corner. We'll send the centre-backs up again. Can't imagine there's long left in this first half. So if Pauline can potentially pinch one here, it would be an absolute sucker punch for Clifton Hill, considering how well they've played in this first half and been able to hold Pauline at bay. If they can get to the if they can get to half time at nil nil, they'd consider themselves in a really good position to attack that final bit. Lofts' corner is cleared away. El Sharifi collects on the edge of the area. He's turned over and a chance now for Clifton Hill to break. Strong challenge from Nicoletti to win it back. Of Peter Harris and feeds it up the line, but way too much on that one. And call for calm there from Chris Theodoridis as it rolls through to the veteran goalkeeper. What we haven't spoken about with Chris Theodoridis is his ability with his feet, namely his uh, run of taking penalties at Heidelberg, which is not something you see every day. It was not in shootouts, by the way, in open play. You know, during the match, if if you miss, if it gets saved. You're scampering back in a hurry. Well, he's essentially Victorian football's answer to Rogerio Senni. <laughs> and, of course... Send him up to take a free kick. Go yeah. on. I mean, maybe not to the full extent of <laughs> Rogerio Senni, but we'll make it work. Um, maybe uh, Jose Luis Chilavere. Yes. So a step down from Senni. Yes. <laughs> I mean... You do get a sense that... Oh, I do wonder if they'll go for him in this sort of game. Maybe if they do win a penalty to send Theodoridis up. You know he'll be asking for it if they'll go for the... They'll wait for just the shootout if it gets to there. But we'll go back with play now for Clifton Hill as that long throw is just hoofed in by Harris. Westerdale clearing it away. Took a deflection off of Kewley Graham. And the ball goes out of bounds and Bullen can take some seconds off the clock as we edge towards half time. Here at Quarries Park. Still nil-nil. Not too many chances of note. Best chance falling of the game to Bulleen. It was Luke Lofts who flashed an effort just over the crossbar. But other than that, quite a tightly contested game. Free header for Carlton Westerdale off the corner looms as a, mm. as a big opportunity as well. And Lifton Hill did have a decent chance for centering header, but Ethan Reed, while he didn't make a save, did get out in time to, to put the striker off and force it over the crossbar. Wilson now with the throw. Pauline might be able to get one last chance in before the break. Options. Seb Wilson just stops to go and hand it off to Cardillo instead and get forward. with a flick on straight to that Clifton Hill defence. We're happy just to hoof it away. Now looking to break in transition. Here through Charlemagne. Plays it back. Kelly Graham's ball over the top and going to ground was Kanakubo, but no free kick is awarded despite the protests from the Clifton Hill bench and those in baby blue on the pitch as that pass just cannons into Gergic and it's turned over. Kanakubo's in behind. Can Clifton Hill potentially get one last chance before half time and they win a corner here? Well defended Big Arich. After the turnover there. It's 
So one last corner here for Clifton Hill before the break. Still nil-nil. Can they potentially take a shock lead here? The boys float in towards the back stick. It goes through a sea of bodies. And it's helped over the crossbar. An open goal beckons. And the referee blows for half time. Gee, what a chance, Nick. What a chance. Might have been Luke Biles on the end of that first cross. The three Clifton Hill players who went up for it. Then the chance on the rebound. Absolutely glorious opening for the underdogs to take a shock lead, but it's spooned over the crossbar. And we go in level. Yes, we go into half time with the scores. Nil nil here at Quarries Park. Best chance of that half, literally falling just then. Bulleen had a couple of chances of their own, namely to Luke Lofts. But it's been Clifton Hill who are testing themselves and putting up a good fight here against the VPL1 opposition. We'll be back in around 15 minutes' time for the second half here from Quarries Park in this Doherty Cup fixture. It is Clifton Hill nil, FC Bulleen Lions nil. Let's tuck into uh, some halftime chicken skewers here, graciously provided by our hosts, Josh Parrish here alongside Nick Tabano. Scoreless at the break in the Doherty Cup fourth round. Join us in 15 minutes.
Yeah, there's three uh, portables there. There was a man. This Doherty Cup fixture between Clifton Hill and FC Bulleen Lions. Nil-nil as we get ready to start the second half. The State League One opposition with plenty of players out sticking it to the high-flying Lions who are in some good form coming into this game. Also without a few key players of their own with the likes of Dante Conte and Puppy out and Marcus Demange and losing Dennis Manilau in the first half to injury. It's been a hotly contested first half here. Clifton Hill having a great chance before the break to open the scoring. Plenty more action here in this second half to come. Nick Dubano and Josh Parrish here to take you through it all in the remaining 45 and potentially beyond if the scores remain level at 90 minutes of course. Extra time and maybe a penalty shootout. Josh, your observations from that first half. Yeah, I think uh, Clifton Hill kept a lid on things for the most part. Didn't allow Bulleen to run away in transition too often. Luke Biles, the, the general in the heart of defence, ordering his teammates around. He's like an extra coach on the pitch, the Heidelberg legend. And they've definitely uh, held their discipline and their shape and had a couple of opportunities themselves. The long throws are a weapon. The crosses, the set pieces, and they've hit in transition a couple of times. So even... Without some of the star names that jump off the page, you know, your Harry Noons and so forth, they're, uh, they're still impressing. Clifton Hill and Robert Farquharson is proponent of the long throw and they're readying themselves for another delivery into the box here. As Farquharson looks for the near post off Westerdale's head. Behind for a corner. And thank you very much to the hospitality here at FC Clifton Hill. Very warm afternoon, warm and blustery on this Good Friday. Clifton Hill with the early attacking, a corner here for Robbie Williamson. Floats it in, it's not a bad ball in, and collecting it was Ethan Reed. No changes at half time either. The only change of the game so far as we spoke about Dennis Menelau with an ankle injury. He's just off to our left at the moment. He's got ice on that ankle. Not a good sign for the informed striker. It was James Wilson who came on in his place. Number seven, the Scottish attacker. Here he is in possession and he goes to ground and wins the free kick. The interesting subplot to this is we spoke with Michael Tarikos at halftime, Josh, and he told us that essentially they've got so many players out Clifton Hill and they're giving it a red hot crack today with a bunch of reserves players the subplot in the second half is that as much as Bulleen have been coming off a short turnaround can Clifton Hill do it with a very very young team yeah and a short bench as well some players playing through injury even on the pines so they don't have a lot of depth as that one's floated straight into the arms of Chris Theodoridis is Jake Cardillo. Headed back from whence it came by Farquharson. Well won by Chalmay. Carrascos calms things down. Cardillo, the outside of the boot if you don't mind. Put into touch by Timmy Cosmas. Nicoletti's throw, laid off by Carita, playing as the nine in the absence of Menelau. Over the top by Cardillo. Carita was onside and contests, wins the throw for Bulleen. Yeah, struggling a little bit with the surface here today at Quarries Park, not the uh, very consistent synthetic that they used to at the Ven. Garifi has it nicked off his toe and Clifton Hill clear the danger. Yeah, they've been quite fortunate in the early going of this season, Bulleen, that a lot of their games have they've played four games at home, three games away. Some of those games have 
You know, some very nice pitches at City Vista as well at Casey Fields is now a chance for Clifton Hill to break. A strong challenge from Westerdale to break that play up as Cardillo with a switching ball to El Sharifi. Back to Begarich. Just hooks it long. Clearing it away was Farkarson. Putting it back. Sending it forward. It's Parascos. Heavy touch there from Dimi Parascos. El Sharifi. Westerdale goes to ground. No free kick awarded. Play on to call. Parascos, strong challenge. Coming across was Lewis Hall. He's got to be careful, Lewis Hall. I believe he saw yellow in the first half. There's an advantage paid by the referee there. But two strong challenges coming in in the space of a couple of minutes. And Jack Cardillo making his feelings clear to the assistant referee on the near side. Good office. Our office for the afternoon uh, on the hill here at Quarries Park. Very warm March afternoon on Good Friday. Wilson. Jamie Wilson onto Luke Lofts. Has Carita on the overlap. And it's blazed over the bar. In the end, it was neither a cross nor a shot from Mark Carita. with some of the moves they're starting to build as Paraskos and Hall exchange handshakes after they're coming together earlier. Still don't feel Bulleen has really exerted control over this game. It's going to be a Clifton Hill ball despite Cardillo's efforts to take a quick throw. Farquharson immediately in stride looking for Williamson. Well defended by Gergic. Now Krajicic joining the attack. Centre half coming forward as an aerial target. Mark Wasson. Off Karita. One two on the near side. Jake Cardillo clears. The commentary team almost getting a touch. As close as we'll get, Nick. Close to whoever gets playing <laughs> in the Doherty Cup, unfortunately. I think our heydays are over. <laughs> Farquharson. This is lofted into the area and it's well claimed, very neatly done by Ethan Reed. Quick restart, looking for Sharifi. Well in twice by Peter Harris. He goes to ground under the challenge of Vincent Nicoletti and Clifton Hill have the throw. Is this one in range? Long throws have been quite a weapon for, for Clifton Hill. I mean, so far, it's, it's actually caused a lot of problems. And you do wonder if when this game starts to keep opening up and set pieces become more and more important, you do wonder if that's going to be potentially one of the best avenues to goal for Clifton Hill. Reid collects that one. It's Pauline looking to... Repel the danger, still nil-nil. Still both sides chasing that all-important open-up. Of course, nil-nil remains at 90 minutes. There will be 30 minutes of extra time, and then if neither side has edged ahead at the end of 120 minutes, then penalty shootouts await. Referee just pulling up here for a head injury. There's uh, Robbie Farkarson who's gone to ground, it looks like. Inadvertent coming together with uh, Luke Lofts. As the English playmaker barreled his way past.
just a brief stoppage here as Farkasen gets some treatment on this near side. Chance for both teams to have a little bit of a breather. We're a few minutes into this second half, a very, very warm on a Friday afternoon. Not a, not a cloud in the sky at the moment. So there'll be no reprieve for the players until way later in the in the evening. If we get, if we may have to get that far if we go towards extra time. But on Clifton Hills bench, if they are forced to make a change, George Janopoulos, John McShane, Manus Salakis, Gabriel Varika, Alexander Piccinelli, and Lewis Papadopoulos. Boleyn still have on the bench Sean Cooper, Angelo Amato, Xavier Norton and Finn Harbinson and James Sekris, the backup goalkeeper. Impressed with uh, Finn Harbinson on Monday night and his cameo? Absolutely. And I really hope we get to see an extended cameo, especially with this game on the line. I feel like we've spoken a lot about the short turnaround. If Boleyn need to get some fresh legs on with some of these players who played quite an intense game on Monday night, despite winning 5-1, they still, you know, it's only a short turnaround. These players are human after all, and they're semi-professional athletes. So they don't have the, mm. the, the beauty of coming in and getting the, the all-star recovery and, and pulling up three days later, you know, as other teams at a higher level would be able to and, and get ready. You do get a sense that if you're Giuliano Febarino, you'd want to make that substitution. But the, the interesting subplot is they've already made that one change. So mm. they've only got two windows left. They didn't use their free window at half time, Josh. Um, to maybe freshen things up. So I think Finn Harbinson should be that first name coming on, just given how impressive he's been. But the other one who was also pretty good on Monday night was Angelo Amato, who showed a lot when he came on as well. So you get a sense that there'll be at least two of the names that they'll turn to at some point. Um, and then there's also Sean Cooper and Xavier Norton, especially Sean Cooper is a bit more defensive. But if you haven't seen Finn Harbinson and... Uh, I didn't watch the game on Monday night for those at home. I mean, definitely go back and, and watch some of the highlights because his goal was, was well taken at the back post. He almost scored a second. He's got a great celebration as well, right out of the James Madison uh, notebook. And, of course, when someone at the age of 17 is throwing a dart, you can only think of one man, the, the <laughs> Luke Littler. As uh, Lockie Flanagan coined him, is the, uh, the NPL Victoria's answer to, to Luke Littler, potentially. The wonder kid. Helped all the way back to Theodoridis, who cleared it away first time. Well, you imagine having used one window already. The next bullying change probably be a double. Clifton Hill, I think, will try and keep the same 11 out there as long as they can, given what we've heard about you know, the challenges they face to their depth for this cup tie. Still holding their own against opposition two divisions higher than them. Cardillo. Luke Biles. The garage with time. Gergic. Gets it back from Parascos. On to Westerdale. Has Al Sharifi. Couldn't keep it. Al Sharifi. Use of the arms there. Bit of a wrestling match with Peter Harris. Clifton Hill stalwart wins a free kick. And now finally back to 11 players with Farquhar and Sporting the headband. After that knock, maybe just opened up a cut on the forehead mm. and didn't look like a high velocity collision. I don't think there's any real danger of concussion there for Robert Farquharson, but it's all strapped up. He'll soldier on. Cosmos. Couldn't keep it. Just wonder if you're, if you're bullying at the moment. I mean, they've barely been able to test in this second half bar that Margarita chance. It's been very stop-start, and they haven't really been able to play sort of on their own terms in much of this game. It's been mm. purely dictated by Clifton Hill. and I, I, You hate to throw this term around, Josh, but 
It does. There is that little bit of sense of maybe playing down to their opposition a little bit that we do sometimes see in the Cup where you've got a team that comes in from a lower league that, you know, look to frustrate and you can't help but sort of be brought down to that level. And they're doing a very good job of it at the moment, the home side. They've really frustrated this Bulleen team that really just can't seem to get a clear foothold on this contest and really start to exercise control. Bulleen do most of their best work in open spaces and there's been precious few of those been a, a real midfield arm wrestle. Westerdale, again, always pressure on the ball when it gets to the bullying midfielders. Happy enough to let Begarich and Gergic knock it around all they like, but as soon as Westerdale or Paraskos get the ball, Clifton Hill, they're not sitting on the edge of their 18-yard box. They're getting pressure on the man in possession and stopping bullying from playing at the source. This is well drilled and well coached from Clifton Hill. Might not be especially pretty, but it's working a treat so far. Headed down by Gergic for Cardillo. Carita. Now to Wilson. Westerdale. Around the outside. Oh, heavy challenge. Farquharson he had the contact from here and he goes into the book. Bit of concern for Jamie Wilson. I don't think we're calling for the physio just yet. Just as they opened up Clifton Hill Heavy challenge comes in. They've had a few yellow cards. That's something that the State League one side has got to watch out for. Is if they go down to 10, this could all crumble very quickly. Mm. But so far, they've made good use of their tactical fouls and heavy challenges. In a good position here, Josh. If you're Luke Lofts, it's a very dangerous position. Mm. Never seen Luke Loft take a free kick before. Don't rule it out. He can put one on the head of a centre back, but he, he may go for goal from here. It's not out of the realm of possibility. And would you blame him? Let's see what the Hull City product has in store. Loft's fired across the box. Paraskos sets Gergic onto the loose ball on the spin. Theodore Reedy sees it over the byline. A real tough one for Ivan Gergic. Off balance. Hook back into danger. Just looking at that bullying bench, Josh, no movement whatsoever at the moment. No indication whether that change is going to come. And something we have seen from Bulleen a bit is that they do like to keep their best 11 on the field for as long as possible. And they do like to, you know, try and get the best out of it and, and wait as long as they can before they make those first changes, if they can help it. Strong challenge there and... Spoke about the chippiness of this game, Josh. And then here we go. A few push and shove right in front of that Bulleen bench. And a yellow card has been awarded. I think it might be to Nicoletti. So Clifton Hill player still on the ground there. Suddenly it was an all-in. One for young and old. Right in front of the benches. And Clifton Hill were not happy about the challenge that came in. I just wonder if this game's going to open up a little bit in this sort of second stanza of the second half as both teams start to chase it. Or if you're Clifton Hill, you, you look to keep bodies behind the ball and look to continue frustrating and you'd be happy potentially with, with extra time. And of course, when it's, when it's penalties, Josh, it really just comes down to, you don't want to use the word luck, but it all just comes down to a little bit of skill execution in those key moments. It's... All, all the previous 120 minutes, doesn't matter how much you're dominating, it all goes out the window. I tell you what, I would not want to get into a penalty shootout if my opposition goalkeeper is Chris Theodorides. Because mm. not only is he a good penalty saver and he's athletic and he can take one himself, of course, but he's a master of the mind games. And I saw that at, at Preston a couple of years ago when he really got in the penalty taker's head, tr pulled out every trick in the book, roughing up the penalty spot, holding onto the ball... Just delaying and icing the kick taker, and I suspect we'll see some theatrics if it gets that far. And of course, you could probably expect him to be one of those five names on the uh, 
on the list as well to step up and try and beat Ethan Reid? Without a doubt. He would fancy himself. The veteran goalkeeper who's triple premiership winner and a championship winner as well at Heidelberg. So too Luke Biles who stands over this free kick as we're eventually back underway after the set two. The treatment dished out and Clifton Hill look for Lewis Hall off the free kick. Kryacic at the back post. A moonraker of a centering ball and heels for a handball against Westerdale. I think he was outside the box. Not heated anyway. There is a Tough Sorry, to see the lines from uh, where we're broadcasting from. Nick. I think he was just outside. Yep, yep, I think so as well. Wouldn't have been a penalty, even if the handball had been called. Cooley Graham. Deep cross. Nicoletti shields it out for a goal kick. Another nervy moment for the VPL one outfit against lower league opposition there. To make a cup run this year, but the way things are going, could be cut short at the final hurdle. Still scoreless at Quarries Park. This Berlin team look very tired. I think that's that's honestly the feel I'm getting is they just mm. look tired. They look leggy. I, I think it, it, they, a change needs to be made if they're going to be able to win this game because it's a warm day. It's not as if they're playing in, in mild conditions and it is a three-day turnaround. This is a three-day turnaround, but instead of even playing on Friday night, you're playing on Friday afternoon. Mm. Like, it's, it's even less preparation. You've got to be up early. You've got to get to the ground earlier. It's a lot of extra prep that goes into it. And you finish late on the Monday night as well. So probably barely got much time to really prepare for this game as well in terms of a training perspective. But Clifford have had a good six days between games. So don't want to make excuses, but, you know, it, it all adds up. Like, for both teams, they've got their own obstacles to face. But... Still eight first team uh, yes. players unavailable oh, no, for Clifton no. Hill, so it's a bit of bit of both, really. There's you know sort of adversity for both teams to, to overcome. It's almost cancelling cancelling it out for either side at the moment. But potentially with all those changes from the squad that faced Sydney, Clifton Hill are very fresh. All mm. these new faces have come in. So well, of course Clifton Hill. Looking ahead from this week, three of the next four games at home. Up next against Carrio, then Ballarat City, the, the newly relegated Ballarat City, the newly advanced to the next round, Ballarat City. Western Suburbs away, then Westgate at home. Bulleen playing just up the road against Brunswick City next Friday night before two straight games at home against Lange and Kingston. And then another victory after that away. How long can Clifton Hill keep up the, this level of intensity that they're playing with? This Hall goes in late again, walking a fine line. <laughs> few words there with Mark Carita as well. I think it's a risk, Josh, because without making a sub and sticking with this 11, it's going to require a lot, especially in this heat. Well, you would expect that even with, you know, a fresher team that wouldn't be as physically fit as their VPL counterparts. They don't train as often. They're not as far into their season. You would sense, I mean, there's, what, maybe about 20-odd minutes remaining in this second half, and you would get a mm. sense that maybe... Just maybe, as I think we're getting a, our one and only drinks break of the second half, that now might be the chance just to, it's almost like a timeout, you know, for both teams just to hit the reset button and maybe look to, you know, the bench and try and freshen things up because in these next this next portion of this second half is when both teams are going to really start to feel it. You know, the, the it's going to get even warmer. This is now that hottest part of the day. Sorry to keep Harper on the point about the heat, but if it's warm for us, imagine what it's like for them out there at the moment. So... For both teams, I think the cha changes should be in the offing quite soon. Well, if you're just joining us, scoreless. Cup set potentially brewing here. Clifton Hill, the team who made it, it was one penalty shootout away from the national stages last year. Again, mixing it with one of the top sides in the state. FC Bullying Lions, who, yes, they play in the second tier, but they have been flying the past couple of weeks. 5 1 winners on Monday night against Werribee City at the Veneto Club.
chance for Clifton Hill to cause an upset, but Bulleen not going to go lightly into the dark. They've still got just over 20 minutes plus added time to find a winner. Well, extra time awaits as Cardillo's cross is not the best, and it's out for a goal kick, and it just seems the, the final ball, the, the interplay, just hasn't been there for Bulleen. It's been very stodgy, very stop-start. Clifton Hill have been able to frustrate every time Boleyn looked to break. Just those professional fouls from your, your likes of your Biles and your Karajic and your Halls who have been there and done that. They are the masters, masters of these one-off games. They've been there and done that and played in so many of these sort of games throughout history. That's uh, the former Heidelberg team of Biles and Hall is famed for is just how clutch they were in those big games and it really mattered when the chips were down. Greg Blake dubbed them the Cardiac Kids for a reason. They were top shelf when it came to pressure moments. How will Bulleen hold up to the pressure of the nerves of potentially bowing out of the cup against lower league opposition? Here's Luke Lofts for Bulleen. Charge down. It's out to Hussein Al Sharifi. Left footed delivery is short and Easy clearance for Biles. Still this bullying attack continues, but not very fluid, Nick. It's, it's choppy. It's not the kind of fluid combination play that we're used to seeing from bullying. It's just not clicking. Also, uh, I think the, the, the pitch factor is also a big thing as well. I sure. think the, the smaller pitch, you know, Bolina are used to the wide expanses of the Venetal Club as well, and... The turf as well, we spoke at the pristine synthetic. We don't have to worry about bobs in the pitch and everything like that. And Boleyn like to play a direct style that's very much along the carpet. So I think that that's something they're going to have to contest with and continue to contest with um, in the remainder of this game. But for Clifton Hill, it's just all going their own way. This is exactly what they would have wanted. Down and dirty, in the mud, um, and just make this game as frustrating as possible for Boleyn. It's a nice little touch there from one of the spectators. Bit of a scorpion Ooh. kick back into play. <laughs> Best, <laughs> best touch we've seen all afternoon. Even uh, did respect. a bit of a, a bit of a replay to his mate to tell him, no, no, I did it, mate, I did it. Like, you know. Tell me we caught that, Mateo. <laughs> Get the slow-mo up for you. Kanakubo. Julie Graham involved. It's back with Biles. Luke Biles. Not to handle that ball. Bulleen wanted a free kick for Westerdale. Instead, it stayed in. Here it's got it away. Kanakubo. Dribbling into traffic, but it spills to Robbie Williamson. Good feet from Williamson. Still going, Robbie Williamson! Oh, that would have been special. He was looking for the top corner. He saw his name in lights for a moment there, Nick. It's a good effort. I mean, it was good feet for him to create that little bit of extra space. And not a bad effort on goal at all from Williamson. I feel like this game, it's almost going to come down to a moment of magic if it's going to be from either team. And Williamson, not afraid to take that on. It was actually a really nice effort on goal. Well, used to the spotlight, Robbie Williamson. Shameless. <laughs> Nicoletti cleaned up, late tackle. And the yellow card is out. Once again this afternoon. I believe that was Peter Hiris who's been booked. Fourth or fifth yellow card for Clifton Hill this afternoon, at least four. Yeah, so certainly stacking them up at the moment. Just got to make sure they're <laughs> rotationally fouling and uh, don't double dip. Right. Chance, left footed ball in. It's very short. The near stick, Farquharson dealing with it easily. Nicoletti, Cardillo, Al Sharifi picked off by. Clifton Hill defence through Peter Harris and way into touch. 
Again, we tick closer to an extended period. This game's still scoreless. Really, Clifton Hill had the best chance of the afternoon just on the stroke of halftime. Literally the last kick of the first half where it was ballooned over the bar on the rebound from close range. Bolleen, decent cross for Wilson who had more time than he knew. Yeah, almost came to him unknowingly there mm. because it sort of went through the sea of bodies and he had to quickly react and just get a foot to it. But clean purchase, but not on target. Still surprising though, Josh. We've, we're coming in towards the final part of this game and still no subs in this second half. A lot of tired bodies out there. This is Cosmos. Little layoff for Shalme. With Cosmos. Looking for Kanakubo. Farquharson in support. Farquharson's cross is floated over the crossbar and behind for a goal kick. And a bit of a missed opportunity there. We've seen the delivery from wide areas hasn't been terrific in this game from either side, really. It's one of the reasons we're still scoreless. The wind in the first half has really died down. It's even hotter out there than it was before. Jamie Wilson. Kind of Kubo thought he was fouled. It might not matter. It's Cooley Graham intercepts. Jesse Cooley Graham couldn't quite pick the narrow gap. Dimi Paraskos. Al Sharifi lays it off for Mark Carita. And now Bulleen can spring in transition. Carita thumped the shot in. It's blocked on route by Biles. That one's given away straight to Westerdale. Al Sharifi went to the turf. Can't believe he hasn't got a whistle there. Williamson. Shalmay back to Robbie Williamson. What about that for a ball from Williamson? Finding Jinji Kanakubo who throws the step overs. Clifton Hill, great chance. What a save. Is that off Ethan Reid? No. Completely sprayed there from Dimitri Cosmos. What a chance there for Clifton Hill. Not sure that it deflected off the goalkeeper's foot, Nick, but maybe it's come off the base of the post. I think it has. Oh, what an opportunity again there for Clifton Hill. They've had two of those now. Cosmos in the second half. That chance right on the on the brink of half time from Luke Biles, which he smashed over the bar from basically on the goal line. They have had their chances, Clifton Hill. They've been right in this game and Probably on the base, but probably deserve to have the lead right now. Oh, gee. Bulleen Lions breathing a sigh of relief. Gone, Mark, just came back off the base of the post there. Beautiful build-up play from Clifton Hill. Their best passage of the night, or the afternoon, I should say. The raking crossfield ball from Bobby Williamson. Gingy Kanakubo showing a burst of pace and skill. Cutback was on the money, but couldn't quite get it on target. Just looking on that far side, looks like it's Lewis Hall receiving some treatment. Actually, no, I think it's... Sorry, not Lewis Hall. It's uh, Peter Harris, who was on the deck. Yeah, limping to the sideline. So just over 10 minutes remaining in this game. 78 and a bit minutes played. Clifton Hill, 10 or so minutes away from getting this game into extra time. Boleyn, the longer this game goes on, the more frustrating it's going to get for them. It's still nil-nil. There's still plenty of time to find the all-important goal as Peter Reed is under some pressure there from Wilson. Hit it well in the air, didn't he? Chris Theodoridis, but so the barely, question is, sorry, barely he worked Chris Theodoridis today. Don't think he's had a notable save to make, which speaks volumes of the defending in front of him. He's marshaled his penalty area well. Kanakubo. Lots of time for Gergic. Looking for Karita. 
Keeps it alive on the left. Wilson. Al Sharifi. Hussein Al Sharifi. Block took the sting out of the shots and Theodorides charging out. Pouncing on the loose ball. Bullying player down behind play. Clifton Hill on the attack through Nicholas Chalmay. Nick Chalmay back. All the way back to the centre halves in Luke Biles. And Julie Graham, Kriacic with the crossfield ball. Well time challenge from Nicoletti. And Hussein Al Sharifi has limped back to his feet. Jogged back into position on the right hand side of the bullying attack. Looks like Peter Harris is okay to continue as well for the time being. Williamson. Julie Graham. Penalised. Again, it's Al Sharifi on the deck. He's copped an absolute battering in the last couple of minutes. Again, the best chances of falling Clifton Hill's way. One scooped over the crossbar on the stroke of half time, another against the base of the post. Question is, Nick, did Clifton Hill want this game to go to extra time? Given the depth challenges that they've faced with so many first team players unavailable, they've done so well to get the game through to this point at nil nil, but do they want the uh, extra time or they prefer to? try and risk something to settle it in 90 minutes given they've got limited bodies available on the bench and yes and no yes in the sense of the closer it gets to a penalty shootout probably the better for them because I think when it, once it's like that it's just pure jeopardy but but another 30 minutes as you mentioned Josh with Bulleen probably being a more seasoned team with more senior bodies that could be a little bit of a concern for Clifton Hills. A little bit of uh, coming together there with El Sharifi on that far side. But I think conversely for Bulleen, they'd hate to have extra time because they just played on Monday and they still haven't freshened things up a lot. And you'd get a sense maybe maybe Giuliano Feverino keeping those subs for a little bit later towards half uh, towards the end of the game and maybe looking to make those changes in extra time, whatever it might be. But Dimitri Cosmos, by the way, was just down behind play and has now resumed his position so Clifton Hill back to 11 men so it's just been one of those games for Bulleen Josh it's just down and dirty as Gergich under all sorts of pressure there from Williamson but it's it's just frustrating for them it's just been a very frustrating game for Bulleen and Clifton Hill it's been played perfectly for them just say I'm, I'm loving the energy and effort of Robbie Williamson up front Looks as likely as anyone to find the back of the net. Luke Lofts. On, to Wilson. No shooting avenue available. Westerdale had his heels clipped by Nick Chalmay. A free kick bullying. Chance to put a ball into the box. Just seeing those moments of transition when Luke Lofts is the one sort of initiating and getting the ball in transition and breaking with speed. They just didn't have the options. Clifton Hill was so well organised and were begging the Bulleen players, getting behind us, we're going to sit with this offside trap. And that forces, you know, Wilson or Al Sharifi to come and receive the ball and it's just perfectly plays into Clifton Hill's strengths and we've seen that time and time again. So we'll see what they can do from this set piece. Got a good opportunity here with someone like Luke Lofts. It's going to be Lofts who has an effort on goal, which Theodorides... Makes a comfortable save straight into the bread basket, but at least they've tested him now. Hasn't had a, a serious save to make. Clifton Hill custodian. Lewis Hall. Cardillo in strongly on Kanakubo. Wilson, lovely back heel from Lofts. Wilson finds Al Sharifi. 
running into traffic. He hasn't had much success this afternoon off the dribble, Al Sharifi. It's time and time and time again when he's tried to come inside. Such are the narrow dimensions of Quarry Park. Clifton Hill able to cover those spaces pretty effectively. And now Wilson finds Luke Loft lining one up. Again, they get pressure on the ball. Again, they charge down the shot. And again, Bulleen is stymied here. Bit better there from Bulleen, finding Lofts in some space on the edge of the area. But still, the, the, the shots that they're getting, the chances they're getting are from range. They're not in comfortable positions for Bulleen, not in positions where they can really test Chris Theodoridis' goal. It's, it's chances, as we said, but it's not the chances they would want. There's none that's really falling inside the 18-yard box. And that's a concern. I wouldn't be averse to having a few cracks from range if I'm bullying, no, because they've most of them have been blocked or at least deflected and en route, and none of them have been sweetly struck. You've got to say, when you got that, wait for just a sec. It's Krajic going back to Theodoridis, who will clear. When you've got that much experience with Krajic, Biles, Hall, it's such a hard three players to come up against who could probably still easily at least play at a much higher level. Carita on for Luke Lofts. Just too heavy. Luke Lofts looks to the heavens. He thought he was through and maybe alleging an infringement. I think he thought that either himself or Carita got fouled. I mean, Carita went to the deck, but look, he just lost his balance. Is he held? And pulled back just as he tried to run onto that loose ball. I don't think he was getting there anyway, but again, a sign of the, the frustration for Bulleen this afternoon as BPL one side find the going tough on a state league pitch. Cardillo. Parascos into get play moving and he floats it towards El Sharif who knocks it down to Wilson here's Loft in some space on the edge of the area feeds Wilson Wilson hits it it's always going wide it took a deflection and a corner here for Bulleen this is a better patch here from the visitors and they're starting to turn the heat up here on Clifton Hill yeah, Clifton Hill have blocked just about everything Bulleen needs to get the ball out of the feet quicker and just unleash shots quicker Maybe try and feast on some rebounds if they can. No. Tight pitch dimensions. You don't have time on the ball almost ever unless you're a centre-back. Another set-piece opportunity here for Bulleen. Westerdale floats it in. It's headed by Carita towards the back post. Still not cleared by the Clifton Hill defence. Parascos finds Wilson. Fizzes the ball across the face and it's well defended, but it will come back. Wilson again. Gets around one, looking to get past another. He goes to ground. And a penalty is awarded to Bulleen. Oh, Clifton Hill finally coming unstuck there. They've defended so valiantly for so long, but Jacob Krajic knows. He knows he mistimed that one. Jamie Wilson with the burst of acceleration and quality that he needed. Now Bulleen have the chance from 12 yards. Well, you spoke about the gamesmanship of Chris Theodoridis. It's all going to have to come into play here if Clifton Hill are to survive this penalty. The damn wall potentially breached. And it will be Luke Lofts who will step up and take this penalty. Three goals last uh, this season. VPL one golden boot winner. And also the Players' Player of the Year as well. He was, he swept up everything with how well he ended the season. And can he put one foot in the next round for Bulleen Lions against this resilient Clifton Hill side? Theodoridis making sure to stand right over him, slowly but surely make his way back, icing the kicker here as you spoke about, Josh. Maybe to hope that maybe Luke Lofts thinks about it a little bit too much as Lofts with the game essentially on his boot. Lofts steps up, buries it. Bully take the lead. 
It just had to be the Golden Boot winner, Luke Lofts, who finally, finally breaches the damn wall. And with minutes remaining, Bulleen have one foot in the next round of the Doherty Cup. And a much needed goal for the Lions, who have survived for now the Clifton Hill test. Oh, gee. Clifton Hill, that is a sickener for them. They've been the better side. They've had the better chances. They've punched well above their weight. Jacob Krajicic exchanging words with his coach. It looks like he's going to go up front. Well, potentially a little bit of a, you know, a bit of a Harry Sutar-esque going forward for this one here, trying to get the, the tall body, looking to go a little bit more direct as they chase what could be a potential equaliser. We've only got seconds remaining before second half stoppage time here. But right at the end, when it seemed like Clifton Hill were edging closer towards extra time, Josh, Bulleen, snatch it. But is there one last twist as the ball's nodded forward? Reid comes out off his line and collects before Williamson can get on to the end of it. Imagine we get a couple of minutes of stoppage time, given we've had those injury stoppages, a few yellow cards. Fortunately, we don't have a, uh, a subs board here, Josh, so we don't know how much out of time there is here. We are in the dark as far as it uh, goes with out of time, but imagine Clifton Hill have got three or four minutes to make something happen as they go to the bench and make changes. In fact, there'll be substitutions for both teams. Timmy Cosmas coming off. Looks like Nicholas Shulmay as well coming off. Yes, indeed. Double change for Clifton Hill. Manus Salakis is one of the subs on. Famous name in Victoria, last name in Victorian football, Manus Salakis. I have to imagine he's some relation to Peter. It looks like Angelo Amato on here for Bulleen and it's Carlton Westerdale. I think it might be Carlton Westerdale. Is it I think Al Sharifi? Al Sharifi. Al Sharifi, come sorry. Off. So Lofts. Wilson, happy to let it run. It's really now or never for Clifton Hill. They hung with the big boys as long as they could. They had their chances. They struck the woodwork, but still, it's FC Bulleen Lions who have the lead. Sorry, I just was distracted by the fact there was a motorbike just <laughs> zooming through the background of that shot. <laughs> and it's making its way behind us at the moment. Unbelievable. Sorry. The beauty of uh, <laughs> beauty of the Doherty Cup. Got a dirt bike making a cameo appearance in stoppage time. Ball sent forward. Sets a real task for Angelo Amato, who's happy to take it into the corner. Takes a deflection and Boleyn do win. I believe he's a corner. They can take more time off the clock and edge even closer to a place in the next round of the Doherty Cup. It's been less than convincing, but it's win or go home in these games. It doesn't matter how you get through. Westerdale. Carlton Westerdale will take it to that same corner. George Janopoulos seeing him over the line. Goal kick Clifton Hill. They have to go now. Is there time for one last chance for a Clifton Hill equaliser? They fought so bravely for so long in the blazing afternoon sun here on Good Friday. Instead it's Angelo Amato just kicks it away. Anywhere will do. Seconds to seconds. As Craig McRae says, you've got to play the seconds, Josh, and it looks like Paulina doing exactly that. Krajic attempting a long throw. Substitutions being made to eat up some clock for Bulleen. Looks like Finn Harbinson's going to be summoned for a last-minute cameo. Looks like Mark Carita is going to be coming off here and not sure who the other one's going to be. in Bulleen's interest to play dumb here and the second substitute mysteriously realised their numbers come up at the last second still waiting to find out who the uh, 
the second changes as bullying juniors like that. I have to see their uh, one of their own getting onto the park. Is that other change going to be made? They might, they might just hold for the next stoppage, to be honest. As <laughs> Harvinson on defensive duty straight away. Look at Theo here, Josh. Just keep an eye on him. He's uh, he's giving the uh, uh, Jake Cardillo's come off on the far side. I think that's Sean Cooper coming on here. Extra defensive body. That's what they need. And now. Clifton Hill will send everybody forward. One perched outside the box. Theodore Reed is on the halfway line. Farquharson. Well, they've conceded a corner, Bulleen. I'll tell you what, if you're Chris Theodore Reed is, you're giving the here if you need. <laughs> and you know what? If you're, if you're Nick Georgiakopoulos, you're saying, you know what, mate? Get in there, son. Just go for it. Theodore Reed is going to go in the box. <laughs> They're leaving one defender on the halfway line. Robbie Williamson with the delivery. Quite reach a teammate. Biles goes back. Chernopolis. Oh, and now no. Paraskos knocks it forward. And Finn Harbinson has an empty net with Theodorides retreating. It's Finn Harbinson to steal, steal a spot in the next round. And he does so with ease. And the youngster, he scored his first goal on Monday night, now has two for Boleyn. Another triple 20 for Finn Harbinson. He loves the dart-throwing celebration after he scores. And Bulleen is through. Well, you risk getting an equaliser to lose 2-0. And Chris Theodoridis, who came up from the back, just caught out that one little bit of play. And cool, calm and collected from young Finn Harbinson, who continues to impress, even in the little bout of time he's on the pitch, Josh. That's now two goals in two games. And Bulleen through to the next round of the top of the cup. Literally the last kick of the game, Finn Harbinson. Scores as easy a goal as he's ever likely to. Although, you'd be amazed in those situations with how many players miss the target. Just ask Josh Nisbet. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask James Troisi, I guess. But uh, almost ran the ball into the empty net. And Clifton Hill, they can go out with their heads held high. No improbable cup run for them this year. But with so many first-teamers unavailable, including the likes of Harry Noon... Costa Kanakaris, Dylan McGlade, all not appearing today after they played last week against Sydenham. They should be really proud of their performance today. They were right in this game up until the very last moments. It was a penalty from Luke Lofts after Jamie Wilson won the spot kick. And he was ice cool, the kick taker, the reigning golden boot winner in VPL 1. In Harbinson with the late sealer and FC Bulleen Lions survive a major scare this afternoon to progress in the Doherty Cup. Good result for Bulleen in the end. Job done. Probably wasn't the most satisfying performances, but this was a very tough game. Conditions, short turnaround, the pitch, the opponent, all credit to Clifton Hill who gave a really good showing for themselves and really made life difficult. They're back here next week against Carrio in the league, while Boleyn, Friday night football against Brunswick City, who have, to their credit, been very impressive to start the VPL1 campaign. So make sure you keep an eye on that one, Dunstan Reserve. But Boleyn, it's now six games unbeaten in all competitions. They've got form at the moment, and I'm sure they're going to enjoy the long weekend now, knowing they're into the next round of the Doherty Cup. They want a cup run this year, Josh. They had that excitement in 2019, and they want to have the same in 2024. Well, we had the sniff of a cup set on for a moment there, but FC Bulleen Lions survive. Clifton Hill go out for the first time of asking this time around, but we're going to go and cool off along with the players after a very warm afternoon. Thank you to our gracious hosts, FC Clifton Hill, today. I've been Josh Parrish alongside Nick Dubano, and thank you to you, the viewers at home. It's been a pleasure to bring you this action on Good Friday. We'll sign off from Quarries Reserve, the final score. FC Clifton Hill, nil. FC Bulleen Lions, two. <laughs>